Hi, right, so we're back in the yard again. I've um, been working over here on the veggie garden side. Uh, put on this 2x6 on top of the fence here. Um, I'll have to go back and get another one. There wasn't enough um, left off on the cut off in that one to cover this. So I'll have to get another 2x6. Back to the store again. I got some tomato cages for the tomatoes. Um, I've set the drip system running again when I got here to kind of time it and see how wet it gets. It's almost about half an hour now and it's pretty pretty soaked in here. So I think I might just do it a half hour every day for now to get everything started. Um, and then it's already getting really hot in Arizona now, um, up in the 80s and it's only March. So um, I like to get some, some shade cloth to uh, cover this garden. And so, um, I was just kind of testing out. I've got a bunch of extra PVC left that I pulled out of the yard. So I can reuse that. Um, make a few of these. So I just put one of the uh, uh, cement anchors in the wall there. i got a piece of uh, rebar stuck in the ground. Pretty simple. Slide it over. And uh, put it on the screw. There you go. So I'm going to see how much more rebar I have or how much more PVC I have. I put one every four feet down this wall and then we can get a, a roll of shade fabric to clip to that. Which will help everything uh, be a little cooler and not, not get so burnt. So hopefully that works out pretty well. Okay, so I got a little bit more done today. Um, I planted the rest of the bushes and, and uh, herbs that I had. Um, different flowering plants to attract uh, pollinators to the backyard. Um, I got in different places around the yard um, along the drip system that I laid out. Um, so as you can see, I've got the emitters in here, and I'll leave them on for about 15 minutes to see um, how much water that gives these plants. These are two gallon an hour emitters, so that would be what, half a gallon? Um, and then as well, what I'm going to do with some of these plants, um, they've gotten a little bit big inside their pots. Um, and to reduce the, some of the stress of transplanting, much like I did with the, uh, the bare root tree over there, I'm going to come along and I'm going to cut off some of these leaves, some of the bigger ones, just so that it doesn't have to feed water to these leaves um, after having its roots damaged um, via the transplanting process. So I'm going to go around to a couple of these and do that. So I've been digging a hole to plant the lemon tree and uh, I've discovered something I'd like to show you guys. This is the uh, value of the water harvesting we're doing with these basins. So you can see the top of the ground in these basins it, it looks dry. It's been, has it rained for over a week and it's been pretty hot it's been in the 70s and 80s. But as you can see, as you dig down this hole it's it's moist, it's wet. <laughs> you know, good two feet down. You can see how the water is just under the surface there. And once we put the wood chips over this, that water is going to be right up there at the top because the the wood chips are going to create like a blanket to hold that water in and keep it from evaporating off the top of the soil. So that's really important because as these trees grow, most of their feeder roots are going to be just under the surface of the soil. And so those need to be kept moist, which is why, moist, why mulch is so important. And then collecting all this water in these basins and letting it soak in, you know, deep down, that gives the tree moisture to grow throughout the hot parts of the summer. So I'm glad to see that this is working even after just one, you know, relatively moderate rainstorm. Uh, it's good to see. So I'm going to plant this uh, lemon tree in here and keep going. All right, it's been a good day. I got a lot of stuff planted today. Um, I just came over and planted these uh, two new citrus trees in here. I got the irrigation set up with the bubblers. I've got the cages around them so the dogs don't dig them up. And uh, hopefully they'll get nice, nice and well established. Um, something else I did with the dirt that I dug out of these holes. As you can see, I spread it around this basin to kind of even it out and raise the basin up a little bit over the height of the trees. So each of these trees has its own little basin that will uh, fill up when the irrigation goes on. So I don't want the irrigation to spread out in this part. Um, where the trees can't get to it, so um, 
So yeah, that's about it for today. Just gonna clean up the rest of uh, the things I've left around here, and then uh, get to work on the gutters that come out over here off this roof, um, so I can collect water off the uh, roof of the house and direct it into this basin to water the trees. Get everything set up on timers so that uh, all these plants can keep growing through the summer. Okay, so another day back here in the uh, backyard. Um, like I said before, it's getting really hot already. Um, it's up in the 80s right now. It's only March. Um, oftentimes, they get their first 100 degree days in April here in Phoenix. So um, you can see here in the garden, got the water going right now. But there's already some plants. This kale here that are feeling that stress from the heat so um, what I did is I got some more PVC and stuff to make some hoops like this one um, and some shade cloth so that we can shade that garden a bit um, just got a big tarp here I'm going to cut in half and then I'll have some extra shade cloth which we can put over these trees once it gets up to about a hundred um, for the first year or two we need to protect them during those really hot uh, weather days in the summertime um, so they don't get burned but, uh, yeah I'm gonna get started on that I gotta cut this rebar into pieces so I can have the stakes and then uh, drill some holes in the wall and put the anchors so I have something else to attach it to all right so here is the shade shade cloth uh, little hoop house I made uh, working pretty good still got a good like you know, three feet underneath so you can access the plants pretty easy. And then if you need to roll it up, you just take these off and lift it up and clip it back on. I think that'll work pretty well. Uh, I talked to my friend Diane, who's been gardening here in Phoenix for a long time. Um, and she's already put her shade cloth on her garden because uh, we've got higher than normal temperatures right now. So that'll probably stay on here for the rest of the summer. And then in the winter time, they put greenhouse fabric over it um, to keep this warmer, keep the frost off. So I've also worked on the trellis for these vines a little bit. As you can see, I've taken this vine off of its stake and I've kind of tied it to these wires that I put in the wall so that it can be trained along these wires as it grows and uh, trellis off both ways down this wall. And so this is just some. Um, concrete screws basically. Um, had to drill through the block, put the screws in there, and then this is just uh, like baling wire, rebar tie wire, to just stretch along there, wrap it around the screws. And um, I've used this before in projects in San Diego, and it worked really well. It's got a whole uh, passion fruit vine hanging off of it, as well as another, another one for a uh, grapevine. So. I'm happy with how this turned out. Um, I need to get another drill bit because I burned out the one I had drilling all these holes through this uh, block. So I'm going to get another drill bit and finish off another trellis on that wall over there tomorrow. <laughs>